my dear viewers and students greetings to all of you from srm classes today i am going to deliver my lecture on the topic meaning of geological structure relief and physiography we have already uploaded a video on this topic earlier it was delivered bilingually that is that is in english and hindi both mixed today this is the english version of this topic for those who are of english medium to know the difference between the terms geological structure relief and physiography is very important to understand the different types of questions asked in the examinations unless you know the difference between these terms you cannot understand the questions to write your answer perfectly let me start with what is geology it is the science which deals with the physical structure and substance of the earth their history and the processes which act on them in other words we can say that geology deals primarily with the substance of the earth's crust that is rocks structural geology is the branch of geology which deals with the structure and distribution of the rocks that make up the crust of the earth in the study of geological structure we lay emphasis on three points that is type of rocks age of the rocks and layout of the rocks we know that there are mainly three types of rocks which compose the crust these are igneous rocks which are the basal rocks or the first formed rocks sedimentary rocks having layers of various types of rocks formed by the process of deposition by rivers glaciers wind sea waves reefs etc metamorphic rocks these have been formed by the process of metamorphism with this process we know that igneous and sedimentary rocks metamorphose or change into different types of rocks metamorphism takes place through the process of heat and pressure we will discuss it in detail when we study rocks in a different class now i come to the age of the rocks it is related to the geological history of the rocks here we are concerned about the geological time in which the rocks have come into existence with this knowledge we are able to decipher many things about rocks thus the knowledge of geological time scale is very important to know the age and history of the formation of rocks now i come to layout of the rocks it means the type of structure in which the rocks are found these may be folded faulted bended tilted horizontal etc now i come to the next uh, point that is relief in simple mathematical terms the relief of an area is the difference between the highest and the lowest points of that area suppose in an area the point having the maximum height is 1000 meters and the minimum height of some other point is 100 meters now subtract 100 meters from 1000 meters it is 900 meters which is the relief of that area in the mountains we find higher difference between the heights of the maximum and the minimum points this difference decreases as we move towards plateaus and it further decreases towards plains but it should be understood that some plateaus and plains may be much higher than mountains for example the plateau of tibet is much higher than many himalayan peaks but tibetan plateau has a much lower relief than the himalayas similarly there are several mountain valleys which are located at a much greater height having minimum relief now i come to physiography it means the physical features like mountains plateaus and plains it depends upon the relief for example we know india has mainly three different types of physical features number 1 Himalayas in the north, number two, Deccan Plateau in the south, and number three, the plains, which includes Indo-Ganga-Brahmaputra plain between Himalayas and the Deccan Plateau, and the coastal plains on the west, comprising Konkan and the Malabar coast and the eastern coastal plain. I mentioned earlier the different types of crustal structures 
like folded, faulted, etc. These crustal structures are the result of two different types of earth movements. Number one, sudden movement, and number two is slow or secular movement. The sudden movement takes place for a very short duration of time, causing earthquakes, volcanism, etc. The slow or secular movement continues for a very long duration of time, causing the formation of large stable areas like continents, plateaus, mountains, etc. This can be divided into following movements. Number one, epigenetic movements, which cause the formation of continents, plateaus, etc. In such movement, large parts of the crust move vertically, either upwards or downwards. The upward movement results in the formation of continents and plateaus, whereas the downward movements cause the sinking of a large part of the crust. Number two, originic or originic movement, which cause the formation of mountains due to horizontal movement of the two parts of the crust towards uh, each other. This causes the compression to result in the wave-like pattern on the crust. The continued compression results in the formation of large mountains. Dear viewers, let me describe first of all the characteristics of a fold. A fold has two different lengths which are inclined towards each other. It can be divided into upfold or anticline and downfold or syncline. The highest point on the anticline is known as crest and the lowest point in the syncline is called trough. There may be different types of fold as follows. Number one is symmetrical fold when both lengths are inclined towards each other with the same angle from the horizontal. Number two is asymmetrical fold when the lengths are inclined at different angles from the horizontal. And number three is one limb vertical when one of the lengths of the fold is almost vertical. Number four is overturned fold. Such folds are the result of intense pressure. Number five, isoclinal fold, when both the limbs are in parallel and inclined in the same direction. And number six, that is recumbent fold, when both the limbs are found led almost horizontally due to excessive pressure. There is some other type of uh, structure of fold which is called nape. Nape uh, is formed due to excessive pressure and the limbs of, of, of a fold get separated. One of the limbs may slip along the, along the fold or thrust plane for a very long distance. You can find such nappes in the Himalayan mountains in India. Now I would like to discuss the different types of structures which are formed as a result of tension in the earth's crust. When compressional forces act towards each other at some point, tension is bound to take place on some other point in the earth's crust. As a result of this, of this tensional force, uh, faults develop. If the tension continues for a long time, then a part of the earth's crust may slip downwards along the fault line, resulting into the increase in area. Such faults are known as normal faults. Faults also develop due to compressional force. The faults will develop with the first stage and if the compressional force continues for a long time, one of the sides may slip upward along the fault line, resulting into the reduction of area. Such faults are known as reverse faults. Tension in the earth's crust causes the formation of a very interesting feature known as rift valley. A rift valley is formed when the area between almost two parallel faults subsides. Many examples of such rift valleys are found in India. The rivers Damodar, Mahanadi and Godavari flowing towards east and falling into the Bay of Bengal are the examples of rift valleys. Similarly, the rivers Narmada and Tapti flowing towards the west and falling into the Arabian Sea are also the examples of rift valleys. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.